welcome. So now we're going to learn how to solve rational equations. A rational equation is just an equation between rational expressions. And rational expressions are expressions that can be written as fractions. So for instance, 1 over x equals 2 over x plus 3. That's a rational equation. Notice we have um, variables in the denominator. right? So that's often what we're going to see when we're dealing with rational equations, or variables in the denominator. And x squared minus 3 over x plus 1 equals x minus 1 over x cubed plus 2x. Notice variables in the denominator. This is a rational equation. So we have two methods. And the first method we're going to learn to solve a rational equation. And this is going to be only for a rational equation with a single rational expression on each side. All right? So one fraction on each side. And that method that we're going to use is cross multiply. And you did this, use the same method when you were solving proportions last year in geometry. So that's what we're going we're gonna to do. The same thing we did when we were in geometry. We're going to cross multiply. Uh, the only thing is, is we may have um, a quadratic equation to solve when we're done cross multiplying. So here, to solve a rational equation, we're going to factor first and reduce if possible. Right? Um, if you cancel out a variable, though, remember to check reduced values, the variables, uh, in our equation. Sometimes if we cancel out a variable, it ends up being one of our solutions. You uh, you then our second step is to solve the resulting polynomial equation. Sometimes it's something linear. Uh, sometimes it might be something quadratic that we have to factor. And then you must check the solution. When solving other equations, checking the solution was optional. Uh, it is not optional for a rational equation. And that's because we can have extraneous solutions. Right, and uh, some of these are in your notes. Um, I don't have the notes in front of me right now, um, but I don't think this one was in the notes. But you look, all right, and you check and see if it's in your notes. It might be in the notes. All right, so we're going to. So there's nothing to fact. There's nothing to reduce here, right? There's just one. There's one single factor in each uh, of the positions here in the numerator and the denominator. So we're just going to cross multiply. When we cross multiply. Right? We multiply from one corner to the other. Right? So we're going to multiply the 1 times the x plus 3. And we're going to multiply the 2 times the x. The reason that we can do that is if, is if, that, um, if this is an equation. Right? Our, the only way this is a true equation is if the cross products are equal to one another. Right? So multiplying by 1 doesn't going to change anything. It's, still, it's just going to be x plus 3 equals 2x. All right, so we've simplified, and now we just need to get the x's on one side. To keep x positive, I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So now I've got 3 equals x. There's our solution. We're going to check it out and make sure it works. To check it, you just plug it back in the equation and make sure you have a true expression. All right, so a true equation. So we have 1 over 3. So notice everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in a 3. So 1 over 3 equals 2 over 3 plus 3. And I probably should label that this is the check. All right, so that would be 1 over 3 equals 2 over 6. So we'll combine those terms. And 2 over 6 reduces. Right, they're both divisible by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. That checks out. All right, so this is a good solution. All right, so this is a nice, easy example to start off with. All the all the questions, all the problems in this section are going to be this um, going to be solved using the same method. We're going to cross multiply. If we can reduce first, we will. But otherwise, we'll just go cross multiply and we'll solve. Sometimes it's linear. Sometimes it might be something quadratic. And this one is in the notes. That's why there's an asterisk. I remember I reminded myself. All right. So now we're going to cross multiply. So that means we're going to multiply the five times the x minus 2. Notice I put parentheses so I don't forget to distribute. And even though 1 times 4x is just going to be 4x, just to make sure I've got everything I need, uh, we'll write down that cross product as well. All right, we need to distribute the 4, excuse me, distribute the 5. So that's going to be 5 times x will be 5x. Five, 5 times 2 will be 10. So we have 5x minus 10 equals 4x. All right, so usually I like to uh, keep x positive, but in this case, I have a number with one of the terms and, and not a constant with the other. So we're going to subtract 5x to isolate x. 
the x terms. So now we have negative 10 equals 4x minus 5x is negative x. And then just divide both sides by negative 1. So now x is 10. Let's check the equation by plugging it back and seeing if it makes a true statement. So this would be 5 divided by 4 times 10 equals 1 over 10 minus 2. Well, uh, 4 times 10 is 40, so this is 5 divided by 40 equals 1 eighth. And 5 over 40 can be reduced. 5 and 40 are divisible by 8. 5 divided by 8, excuse me, are both divisible by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 40 divided by 5 is 8. So notice we get a true statement. So this, this solution checks out. x equals 10 is the solution to this equation. And we've done a second problem. <coughs> Let's solve another one. And so now we're going to solve some that involve some factoring because we're going to have x raised to a power. Right? And then we're going to have to make sure that no matter what, that we remember to check our solutions because sometimes when we solve a rational equation, we get two solutions. Right? That's going to happen when we have a quadratic. Right? So your degree equals a number of solutions. Something linear is degree 1. So it has one solution. Something quadratic is degree two. It has two solutions. So sometimes when we solve a rational equation, we get two solutions. Whenever there is a variable in the denominator, it is absolutely necessary to check your answer in the original equation. If the answer obtained makes the denominator zero, that value is not a solution to the equation. Make sure that um, in your notes that if there's any, any terms that they're all filled in for you already, uh, and you might want to add to your notes that if you have anything divided by zero, that is undefined. Right? So we will not be dealing with undefined values. If, our, if, if some solution causes our equation to be undefined, it is not a solution. It's a false solution. It's an extraneous solution. All right, so this one is in your notes. Right? So there's nothing I can do to factor and reduce. So we're going to cross multiply. So now I have x times x plus 2 <coughs> equals 3 <coughs> times 2x minus 1. Oh, I've got a tickle in my throat. I'm trying to open up a bottle of water. And it's very hard to do with a microphone in your hand. <coughs> All right, so now we're going to multiply and distribute. So x times x would be x squared. x times 2 will be 2x. 3 times 2x is 6x. And 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. All right, so when we're solving a quadratic equation, remember we have to solve by setting our equation equal to 0 and factoring. All right, so let's keep the x squared positive. So we're going to subtract 6x and add 3 to both sides. And that will make one side equal 0. And then we can just factor. So we have x squared. 2x minus 6x is a negative 4x. And then we have plus 3 equals 0. All right, so now a is 1. c is 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. We need two numbers that multiply to give us 3 but add to give us the b term of negative 4. Well, if they're adding to be a negative number, they both have to be negative. And well, 3 doesn't have many, many factors. Uh, as a matter of fact, all it has is 1, 3 and 1. Right? So these are 3's these are only factors. It's a prime number. Right? So negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. Negative 1 plus negative 3 is negative 4. So we're going to keep, remember when we factor, we keep the first term. We rewrite the middle term. So negative 4x becomes negative x plus negative 3x. The first two are a group. The second two are a group. Let's factor out our greatest common factor. So for x squared and x, that's going to be an x. x squared divided by x is x. And then we have minus. And then x divided by x is 1. So that's now x minus 1. 
Greatest common factor for negative 3 and 3 is going to be negative 3. Negative 3x divided by negative 3 is x, and 3 divided by negative 3 is a negative 1. So now we have that repeating factor. We can factor that out. So we'll factor out the x minus 1, and we're left with an x minus 3. And now we just set them equal to 0. So x minus 1 is 0, x is 1. If x minus 3 is 0, add 3 to both sides, x is 3. So now, these could both be good solutions. One of them could be a good solution, and the other one not be a good solution. Or neither one of these could be good solutions. We have to check to find out. All right, so we'll just, let's check the 1, and then we'll check the 3. All right, so here's our check. And by the way, this one is in your notes. All right, so we have, so everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in a 1. So we have 1 over 2 times 1 minus 1 equals 3 over 1 plus 2. All right, so that's going to give us, so we have 1 in the numerator here. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. And notice that 1 over 1 and 3 over 3 are both 1. This one checks out. So that this one is a good solution. So x equals 1 is a good solution. We have at least one good solution. Let's see if we have two good solutions or just one. So now we're going to plug in the 3 everywhere we see an x. So we have 3 divided by 2 times 3 minus, oops, <laughs> got my parentheses there, 2 times 3 minus 1 equals 3 over 3 plus 2. All right, so 2 times 3 is going to be 6, and 6 minus 1 is 5. And 3 plus 2 is also 5. So notice we get the same thing on both sides. It's a real number. It's a good solution. All right, so this one has two good solutions. All right, so both x equals 1 and x equals 3 are solutions. We might have 1, we might have 2, we might have none. All right, we have to check our solutions and see, do they work out in the original equation? All right. Let's see if I have another one. I think I have maybe one more. Yep, this, I think this is the last one on this video because the next... Oh, no, I have two, two more slides on this video, and then the rest picks up on the next video. All right, so we're going to solve by cross-multiplying. I always look when I have x's everywhere, just to make sure we can't reduce. Uh, you can't cancel out things that are added and subtracted. You can only cancel out things that are multiplied. So if you can't factor something out, then you can't reduce. Right? And we can't factor anything out, so we can't reduce. So we're just going to go ahead and cross-multiply. So we have 2x minus 3. And don't forget your parentheses, because you're going to distribute both of those terms to x plus 4. Right? Equals, and then we have 3x times x plus 3. So first we're going to, we cross multiply, so now we're going to distribute, we're going to multiply. All right, so we're going to multiply the 2x times the x plus 4, and the negative 3 times the x plus 4. Actually, I don't think this one is in your notes, because I don't see my little asterisk. So just, just follow along. And then we're going to multiply the 3x times the x plus 3. So I'll just rewrite everything as distribution, so then, and then I'll just do all the, all the distrib distributing all at once. So 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 4 is 8x. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. 3x times x is a 3x squared. 3x times 3 is 9x. And right, let's keep x squared positive. Let's combine our like terms. And then we're going to move everything to the, to the right to keep x squared positive. So we have 2x squared and 8x minus 3x. That's going to be 5x minus 12 equals 3x squared plus 9x. Okay. So we're going to subtract 2x squared from both sides. We're going to subtract the 5x from both sides. And we're going to add 12 to both sides. All right, so on the left, everything cancels out. That's going to be 0. 3x squared minus 2x squared is an x squared. 9x minus 5x is a positive 4x. And then we have plus 12. 
All right, so now we try and factor. All right, so A is 1, and C is 12, and B is 4. So we need two numbers that multiply to give us 12, but add to give us 4. And I have all the factors of, of uh, 12 listed there. 12 times 1, 6 times 2, and 4 times 3. Notice none of them add to 4. All right, so there are, there's not two numbers that multiply to give us 12 and add to give us 4. That means that this is not factorable. All right, so this is actually a really nice one for completing the square, and it's a good chance to review completing the square. I say it's a nice problem for completing the square because A is 1 and B is even. All right, so that makes it pretty easy. All right, so a reminder of our steps for completing the square. The first thing we're going to do is move the constant term because it didn't help us any, any anyway, right? We couldn't factor it. It was useless. So we have negative 12 equals x squared plus 4x. And then we're going to add the very, very special, special number to both sides, which is b divided by 2 squared, right? We're going to add that to both sides. So our b, of course, is 4, so we're going to add 4 divided by 2 squared to both sides. And I'll, I'll squeeze it in over here. 4 divided by 2 squared. So 4 divided by 2, well, that's 2, and 2 squared is 4. All right, so this would be 4 minus 12 equals x squared plus 4x, and then 4 divided by 2 right, is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So 4 minus 12 is a negative 8. We can factor x squared plus 4x plus 4. It's always going to follow the same pattern. The square root of x squared, which is x, whatever the sign is, which is it's plus, and then b divided by 2. Right? So, that would be, so b is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2. All right, so x squared plus 4x plus 4 factored is x plus 2 squared. And if you multiply it out, you'll see you do get x squared plus 4x plus 4. All right, so now we're going to take a square root of both sides. And now we have a plus or minus for the constant. All right, we can simplify the square root of 8. 8 is 4 and 2. 1, 2, and 4 is 2 times 2. 1, 2 comes out, 1, 2 goes away, and 1, 2 is stuck in radical prison. Also, don't forget that the square root of negative 1 is i. So to simplify this, 1, 2 is going to come out. We've got plus or minus 2. The square root of negative 1 can come out, because that's just i. And then the square root of 2 is going to be left. 1, 2 is going to be left in the radical, because it's got nobody. All right, so we have plus or minus 2i, square roots of 2, equals. On the, on the right-hand side of the equation, the square and square root cancel, so that's just an x plus 2. And now we need to solve for x, so we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. So that gives us, as a solution, x equals, so we have a negative 2 plus or minus 2, uh, 2i square roots of 2. That's a lot of twos. All twos. And you might be thinking, I don't know how to plug that in and check it. Well, you know what? You don't have to check it. And you know why you don't have to check it? It's because the solutions to rational equations must be real, not complex. fix my A there, values. And that's because the domain of all rational functions is all real numbers. All right, so if you it won't really happen to you, because I make sure that you get real numbers, but should you be solving an equation, a rational equation, and you get a complex solution like this, right? you don't have to check it because you know this can't be the solution. 
right? Because the solutions to rational equations must be real, not complex values, right? So in this case, there are no solutions. We can have, now don't get confused when we're dealing with quadratic. Quadratic can have um, complex solutions. Rational equations cannot have complex solutions, all right? So their solutions have to be real numbers, all right? Um, the, so this, this let's, let's just make sure that this is clear, because this, this might be a little tricky for students. So this is a solution to the quadratic equation. We can have complex solutions for quadratic equations. That is a solution to the quadratic equation. It is not a solution to the rational equation. Right? This is what we call an extraneous solution. It's extraneous because it was a solution. It is a solution to that quadratic equation we solved. However, it's not a solution to the rational equation. It does not meet the requirements. Right? And the requirements are for rational equations, we must have real solutions. Right? And this one was not. All right, so solution, and this is in your notes already, so solutions to rational equations. The domain of rational functions, functions is within the set of the real numbers. If the solutions for the rational function would be imaginary solutions when solving the polynomial equation, there are no solutions to the rational function. Add the last sentence if it's not in your notes. You cannot substitute complex numbers, i, into a rational equation. Right? So if you get that as an answer, you are done, and you know it's extraneous. I believe this is where I want to end up. Yeah. So in the next video, you'll look at uh, reducing first to make your solving a little bit easier. Right? We couldn't reduce in the equations we saw in this Nearpod, but in the next one, you'll be able to do a little reducing. So thanks for watching, and bye for now.